I've been growing hydroponic strawberries since 2015 was the first time I attempted this in uh, a nutrient film technique. I built myself a tower and uh, set it up on my deck outside so I didn't need any uh, supplemental lightings. I ran the nutrients 24-7. Uh, there was no on-off timer. It just ran. Now this thing produced berries all summer really well until uh, it froze up. We ended up getting an absolute ton of berries from this thing. More so when I realized my son was eating all of them for about the first month. I thought the birds were getting to my berries, but uh, no, it was a child in the house. All the strawberry plants that you see in the tower there and all the strawberry plants that I've grown doing this, I've started them off from seed. I just bought the seeds off of eBay or Amazon. Nothing fancy there. They do require cold stratification, so make sure you do that. And they definitely benefit from having a heated pad to pop the seeds. I found the paper towel technique works really good for this in my turbo germination station or whatever you want to call this thing. I'll leave a link up top. You can check that out if you want to learn some more information about that. To start out with, soak the paper towel, put the seeds in there, and as soon as the seeds pop out, they get planted in the media of your choice. Now these aren't the actual strawberry seeds, these are actually cactus seeds that uh, go in the media here, but the technique is exactly the same, just the media is swapped out. These all get planted in perlite, and as soon as they root properly, I put them in my Dutch bucket setup. Kind of the right time to plant these things in your Dutch buckets is once they have their first true set of leaves. That seemed to work out really well for me. Now, this video is months of footage. Uh, actually, it's probably over a year's worth of footage in the making to get you guys this video, so I hope you appreciate it. If you do like content like this uh, too, don't forget to hit the subscribe and you'll see more of it. It didn't take long for these things once they got inside the Dutch buckets to start throwing out runners. Now some of the plants uh, did really good and those are the ones I propagated off of. So to do that all I did is took perlite cups, put them on the top and laid the runner in there. I only watered those once a day with the same nutrient solution that was going through the Dutch buckets and that worked really well. As you can see in the background here, the tomatoes are not doing so good in my hydroponic setup right now and I'm still trying to figure out what's going on there. I'm having great success with everything else that's growing in this setup, just not tomatoes right now. now. I'm not sure if it's bad genetics or what the case is, but some of these strawberry plants just do not do very well or did not do very well at all. You can see a couple of them here. And what I ended up doing with those is I just pulled them out, threw them out, and the top plants that I had to put the top three or four is the ones I decided to propagate off of. All right, so it's been two weeks since I took my strawberry runners and plopped them down in pots. Now I've never done this in hydroponics before, so uh, not sure exactly when the right time to cut these things off is. So when in doubt, two weeks, I think it's good. I'm gonna snip it off, I'm gonna try one. And I'll put this one into a pot. And what better time than during irrigation, which happens to be right now. Now, before I put this thing in there, I will get rid of the runners or any other growth that's on it, just to make sure that the plant is supporting minimal. So let's see what these roots look like. I haven't seen this one yet. Oh wow, actually they're really good. Quite impressed. So I'll get myself a hole in here and we'll get this thing in there. Now with strawberries, I guess you always gotta be careful you don't bury the crown, so I'm gonna do my very best to make sure that doesn't happen. But at the same point in time, I don't want exposed roots either. And there we go. We'll see how it looks tomorrow. So it's been a while since I've done any updates on my strawberries inside my grow room and I figured today was a pretty good time to uh, let everybody kind of see how things are going. Now that's the actual plant that you guys saw me put in and as you can see two weeks was just about the right time. Looks like it's doing really well. I did the same with the other ones. I propagated them as well, cut them off and you can see them growing here in different spots in my grow. All of the strawberry plants are doing really really well. Even the one underneath this huge kale plant that just shaved the entire world. I've got some on the other side of the beds as well and they are doing quite well. This is one of the ones that I know uh, for a fact came out of a seed and uh, that I used the runners to propagate. You can see the size of these runners. The plants are all doing really good. I'm definitely winning with the strawberries right now in my Dutch bucket grow. 
Not so much with my tomato plants and I'm still trying to figure out what's going on there. You can kind of see them struggling a bit. Everything else in the grow has been doing uh, fairly good. Cucumbers could be a little bit better, but I think that is some of my own personal error that I'm learning on and that has to do with how often I'm swapping out the nutrients. So I'm definitely still learning with the whole hydroponic Dutch bucket system inside the home, but we are still getting a lot of great quality produce. I think about one of my favorite plants to grow so far in here has been this pepper plant. It has produced an absolute ton of peppers and I've had no issues with this thing at all. Now I've tried sterile res in the past and it worked great for a brand new grow year number one. Year number two, without beneficials, I had a lot of problems with roots. So I'd honestly recommend if you're thinking about hydroponic strawberries indoors, use beneficial microbes. You will not regret it. It makes a, just a world of difference. It's eliminated all of my root problems. As you can see here, we've got a lot of flowers started all over the place and they're slowly bearing a couple of berries here and there. We cut about a berry or two a day at uh, the time of this video, which is uh, April the 24th today. I think these seeds were initially started in about December. Might have even been November of uh, last year. So they take quite a while to go from seed to uh, fruit bearing plant. But I've had a lot of really great success starting them from seed versus getting the crowns from a store. Actually the last pack of crowns that I got from a store, not a single one of them even grew. Now if you're just starting out growing these inside, I'd strongly recommend a couple of things for you to get going and make it really easy. Uh, lighting is probably the biggest factor. I would uh, recommend getting a SF1000 Spider Farmer light. They run off of about 100 watts and provide lots of light for uh, probably a good 9-10 plants. For the grow media, start out with something like a Coco Coir or just a soilless mix that you can pick up at your local greenhouse. And for the nutrients, I'd go with the Master Blend Strawberry Series. It's uh, cheap and very effective. If it's not available in your area, you can probably get the strawberry tomato formula as well, which is actually what I'm using right now in the video. That should all yield for a very low cost setup and something that will work reliably for you to get some berries inside the house. If you do end up trying to get your own strawberries or you do end up starting your own strawberry grow indoors, please leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you.